Praise God. Praise God, saying, Praise the Lord. I said, Praise God, saying, Praise God. Praise God. I am having a little difficult seeing my paper. He said five minutes, so I timed myself. <laughs> I may go over a little bit, but um, my books this year were first and second. Thessalonians. Uh, are you going to record this time? Oh, okay. <laughs> I got it. Praise God. All right. um, these books, you know, everyone knows that they were letters written by uh, Paul the Apostle. And I can't see this paper. I was encouraged Oops, by Paul's enc own encouragement about the Thessalonians, their faith, and how they were. I don't know why I'm nervous, but I just give God praise. I'm going to talk about these books, okay? Um, even through uh, persecution and the situation that came up and circumstances, they still had hope. Any time that any of us are faced with anything, anything that's going on in our lives, there still is hope. Oh, to mm -hmm. God. Right, They're right, still right. going. Praise God. Amen. Paul told them to stay faithful and to continue to do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Don't stop. Keep going. Isn't that what Mother Hackett told us? Yeah. Don't stop. Don't Keep stop. going. Continue to do what you do. Don't be inter interfered by anything that come around you. Keep doing what you're doing. Because God is coming back. Hardship is coming. We know that. It's already here. Mm -hmm. But we got to keep doing what we're doing. That's right. Still Amen. have that faith. Keep the faith. Don't stop, saints. Amen. Don't stop. Amen. So in the second book, Second Thessalonians, Paul was still encouraging them. And he was happy to hear that they was doing what they should be doing. And they were still doing after they left. So he continued to pray for them. He continued to explain to them what would happen on the day of the Lord's return. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On the day of the Lord's return, it, it's got to be serious. A lot of people are not taking it serious. On the day of the Lord's return. Mm -hmm. But Paul explained to them what was going to happen. He then, um, he was there for them. Of course, he was there for them. And he encouraged them to stand firm and stay away from people that do not live God's way by the gospel. Come on, man. Stay away Come on, from man. people that do not serve God. <laughs> All right, don't associate with them. If they don't want to live right and do right by God, that is their choice. Yes, it is. That is their choice. All we need to do is spread the word, tell of God's goodness, pray for these people, and because the choice is theirs. Yes, these letters that Paul wrote, brought forth along with Silas and Timothy, was uh, the love that God had for them. He told them about the love that God had for them. Praise God. I think I skipped something. Hold on. Uh, these letters Paul wrote and brought forth along with Silas and Timothy were good news. It, they were good news, and the good news came with power. Amen. It came with power. He assured the Thessalonians of God's love for them. The Holy Spirit gave them full assurance. God gave, them, gave it to them, and they brought it forth to the people. And they brought it forth with joy. Didn't Mother Hackett bring the word forth to us, and she brought it with joy, yeah. and we received it with joy. Yeah. The Thessalonians, they became followers, and they received that word with joy. Yeah. They received the word, and we definitely are followers of Jesus yeah. Christ. And we are, and we receive the word with joy given to us through our pastor. We receive that law, that word with joy. Did you not receive the word with joy? Amen. Praise God. We had to do what God says. In yeah. First Thessalonians, it tells us that. So First Thessalonians, first chapter and the sixth verse. So you receive the message with joy. 
from the Holy Spirit in spite of the severe suffering it brought you. In this way, you imitated both us and the, and the Lord. So you see, they received the word with joy that God brought to them. And we received that word. Praise God. Amen. So I know it's short, but in, my, in this first chapter alone, this is why I feel so encouraged because it tells us that we know that the Holy Spirit can give you joy in the, even in through our suffering. Even through our suffering, the Holy Spirit give us that joy. So we just continue to keep praising God. Continue on. And we need to stay focused. Isn't that what Pastor Hacker told us? So yeah. stay focused. That was really the right. last year what she told us. That was a key word. Stay yeah. focused. And I think everyone in here is staying focused. Yeah. Stay focused yeah. and trust God yeah. and believe in God. I know we believe God. Everybody in here believe yeah. God. Yeah. And even when we going through, He want, God wants us to stay focused. Yeah. Stay focused. Yeah. Stay focused on Him. Yeah. When you're going through, don't worry about the situation yeah. or the circumstances that are around you. Stay focused on God. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Throughout this into entire book, yeah. God has taught me uh -huh. to give thanks in all circumstances, yeah. whether it's big or rather small. Rejoice in the Lord all the time and trust him. When things come up in my life, I find myself now and I get upset about it, but God always puts someone in my pathway or just what you know get to me and get me back on track on, because right, sometimes right. you can just wander away and I, I mean all of us holy ghost feel you can look at the circumstance you can look at the situation but you cannot forget about god you got to keep focus on god Amen. so i thank god how this book has got kept me with faith and strengthened me the book these books are was such an encouragement to me. Amen. I read them. You know, they it's the first and second Thessalonians. I think the first chapter is what three, four chapters, and then mm -hmm. second book. And I kept reading them and reading them. And these books encouraged me so much that I am so grateful and I'm thankful how it has helped me. Amen. I know it has strengthened my faith. Amen. I know it has strengthened my faith. I know that it is preparing me not just for the day, the day that he's coming, God is coming. He has prepared me for situation when they come up before me. Mm. And when when I'm, uh, you know, I used to go, oh, Lord, and my husband would give me that word. But yeah. but God is preparing me yeah, wow. when, when, when situation and stuff come up before me. And I thank God for that. Oh, I find Lord. myself more now devoting into prayer and speaking and talking to God about every little thing. Every time something come up, or even if it's bad or good, I find myself speaking and talking to God throughout the day. And I thank God for that. You know, it's not that I didn't talk to God. It's that I find myself devoted talking to him about every little thing right now. Every little thing. Praise God. It has encouraged me so much. So much. And you know what else? I have gotten so boldly oh, to pray for God. myself. Oh, hallelujah, God. hallelujah. I normally would say, baby, can you pray for me? Because this is hurting. Or oh, pray for me that the situation has come up. But I have gotten so boldly, like last oh, night, God. this eye began to hurt. Hallelujah. And I just took my hand and put it up here. Oh, God, it's hurting right now. I need you to stop. I don't remember when did it stop, but it stopped. I have gotten so boldly to pray for yourself. When you're studying, when we're studying such Sunday school teacher, I know, I don't know about you, but I know for me, it is you I'm spending quality time with the Lord. Right. And I love this. And I and, and I find myself sometimes spending so much quality time for the Lord, and my husband has to come in like three or four. So, oh Lord, I haven't even cooked for my husband. I have spent so much quality time with the Lord. But I give God the praise and, and, and just walking around the house praising God. And you know, I said, well, you know, my husband and I, I it's a 
a joke, but uh, a lot of times when I don't have time to, to, to cook or anything, and that's not even in my note, praise God. But a lot of times when I don't have, and we like to have breakfast in the evening. And uh, I love it when my husband calls and says, baby, don't worry about cooking. We'll just have breakfast. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> time with the Lord and I give God the praise for that. So you know it encouraged me a lot as being a, a Sunday school teacher and the studies that I have because I get into my book and I'm in it all day long. I'm in it all day long. And my brother he has always told me anybody that spent time even when I'm in Mississippi I take care of my mom but I'm back in the books. I mean but he said anybody that spend all that time all day in the book got the love of God. I love him. Hallelujah. I love him. So I encourage everyone to make Sunday school your first priority. Make it your first priority. I remember going to Sunday school when I was a little girl. Then all that stuff that you were learning is coming back to you. Those things that you heard when you were small is coming back to you. Yeah, I played. I played in Sunday school. But I remember the word where he, she said, uh, what's her name? Uh, Sister Wright and Sister uh, uh, Martin. They told us, love God. Just tell God you love him. And so I remember that as a child. I love him. I love him. And I wouldn't do nothing for anyone that I wouldn't do for myself. And I love God to help others and help everyone. You know what I'm saying? Praise God. That wasn't even my note, but I said, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So I encourage you, say you want to encourage people to come to Sunday school. I encourage every one of you to, like I said, to make it your first priority. Yeah. Sometimes, and I, this was a, I'm closing with this. Sometimes God would speak and be the early birds, and then church might just be over. Come on. The early birds come into Sunday Sit school, down. Sit we're going to get fed. And then when you decide to come to second service, you might just have missed what God done oh, fed the early birds. Oh, so I'm uh, telling you, the second the second set services, praise God, the lazy bird won't get fed. So sometimes Sunday school, they all then got fed. And you missed it, praise God. Yeah. So Sunday school is very important. This is I and Sister Reed, you was all in my lesson that, uh, when you got started, and you were saying uh, this is I think was you were a pastor that said that you have to be here. You can ask questions, and you can you can discuss, you can talk. You know, you can't, when somebody's up here preaching, you can't stop the preacher. Wait a minute, preacher, you got to explain it. But Sunday school, you need to be at Sunday school because that's where you, you learn. You learn so much at Sunday school. You know what? That's all I have for you. I want you to praise God because this book encouraged me. I'm encouraged. I give God all the praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, sister. Praise yes. the Lord. Lord. Thank God awesome. for using you yes. for sharing with us this morning from the book of First and Second Thessalonians and how Paul encouraged the people. And it's like the word says, eventually at some point in time, we all have to get to know him for ourselves. Yes. Because no matter how much Pastor Hackett knew right. him right. and That's she's right. gone on, That's it. now we got to know him That's for right. ourselves. Amen. Because see, one day when he comes back, That's it. you know, I can't say, well, I knew yeah, Pastor exactly. Hackett. Right. I knew Bishop. That's Let right. me on in. I'm in good yeah, company. Yeah. He gonna say, "Well, yeah. did you know me?" Right. Oh, right. You know, he's gonna say, "Did you know me?" That's it. We have to know him for ourselves. That's so we give God the glory. Thank you, Sister Harris. Amen. You know, I I I thought about you, and I know you'll probably say something afterwards. But I said, if I had my little bell, I almost rung it on you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. <laughs> This time we're going to bring up. Um, 
Who is it? Sister Tracy. <laughs> she wanted to be next. She put her hand on the Praise the Lord. And Amen. as we talked, I kind of been recapping as I go and I teach. So this is a, an amazing, 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 amazing book. Amen. Uh, one book, six chapters, 155 verses, 3,177 words, and 13,826 characters. Right. Praise the Lord. Amen. amazing man of God. Um, he wrote two-thirds of the Bible, and he calls himself, or called himself when he was Saul, the chief of sinners. Amen? So he encouraged me because if God can save him, he can save anybody. So uh, hold on. All those people were praying for that God would save him. This is amazing. Amen? And so God had met him on the road to Damascus, he was blinded for three days, but when he came out of it, he knew who he had met. He had met a man. Amen? Come on. Praise the Lord. He had met God. Praise God. So this book um, is divided. We're going to start in halves. Um, chapters 1 through 3 teach us how to see ourselves. Amen? And I taught a Sunday school that show me your ID. Amen? So when you go and look and pull out your Washington State driver's license, it has characteristics on it, amen, that show us who you are. It may say you're male or female, amen? It might say, oh, she has brown eyes or brown hair, amen? How tall is she? How much does she weigh, amen? And that may not be true because some of us women got this weight going on for the last 30 years. <laughs> Amen. So I taught about show you, show us your ID. Amen. And so I, there's a picture that is really amazing. There's a picture of a kitty cat looking at itself, its reflection, amen, in a mirror. And behold, it sees a lion staring back at him. Amen. Praise the Lord. So this talks about Show me your spiritual ID. Amen. And so this verse goes with the this picture. When we go to Proverbs 23 and 7, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. How we see ourselves is how we impact our life. Amen. And so in this message of Ephesians in chapters 1 through 3, Paul puts us in front of a mirror. You're not who you think you are. You are no longer the boy from the hood, the girl from the hood, amen, or the girl next door. When you come into Christ, everything changes. You're brand new. In the eyes of God, you're now someone special. It's time to step up. Put on this new identity and live a lifestyle that fits you. Amen? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And then we go into chapters 4 through 6 that teaches us what life looks like. How a child of God walks according to his calling, his or her calling in him. Our spiritual position impacts our practical living. Amen? The relationship we have with Christ influences all of our relationships. Amen. This is how Ephesians is broken down into halves. But let's not only think of halves, let's now break it down into thirds. Amen. Ephesians is all about our wealth in God, our walk in Christ, and our warfare in the name of Jesus. Amen. In chapters one through three, Paul unlocks God's treasure chest. Amen. He unveils the blessings that are, we're given in Christ. And in chapters 4 through 5, he describes our walk. 
You know, you can tell a lot about a person by the way they walk. Amen. Amen. And so a prideful person may strut. Amen. A sheepish person may shuffle. Amen. So we have to know who we are, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And so likewise, a believer in Jesus will conduct himself in a way that is indicative of his or her spiritual status, amen? And then finally, hallelujah, and I taught this a couple of weeks ago. In chapter 6, Paul takes up the believer's battle plan, amen, and I asked you, are you dressed? Amen. Do you have your spiritual armor on? This walk yeah. is in a tiptoe through the tulips. And as dad used to say, uh, what was it? Skating on a bed of ease or something like that. It's not an easy walk. Hallelujah. It can be a war in the name of Jesus. We're expected to take a stand. And that's Ephesians in threes. The wealth, the walk, and the warfare, praise the Lord. And so what does this mean to me? These are all the tools, when we think about it, that we need in him. If we just read this one book, we would have everything we need, amen? We first need to know who are we in Christ, amen? And once we know who we are, then we move on to the next thing, and how do we dwell among each other, amen? We have to walk in unity. I taught a lesson about when you have an aunt with your brother or sister, go back and get that thing right, amen? And we may have to walk in forgiveness, and is that easy? No, no it's no, not. No. Not all the time. Amen. Even if that person doesn't get it right with us, we still have to let go and let God in the name of Jesus. And the third step is the warfare. Are you dressed? Put your spiritual clothes on and fight this invisible battle because that's what it is. There are spiritual things going on in high places that you would have no idea. I would challenge each person to research what's going on in the world in the name of Jesus. And so I thank God for this book. It's taught me a lot. And it's just been a blessing to me. And I just hope that you guys got a little bit of nuggets oh, yeah. that you can carry it on yeah. in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you and amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 It makes you want to just go and get the book of Ephesians and open it up and start reading it right now. Yeah. Come on now. I don't have anything to say. Yeah. I don't know what to say. Come on now. How do you condense six chapters in a few minutes? Come on now. Jesus said, if you just lift me up, I'll do the rest. All you got to do is lift him up. And he said he would do the rest. But she said, identify with Christ. Where is your identity? Who do you identify with? And then she also talked about putting on the full armor. You know, that word just went forth again this morning. Uh, uh, Deacon Wolf taught on that in his Sunday school. But how can we battle in this world if we don't have the armor of God? How can we face up with the enemy of this world if we don't put on the full armor? All the tools that God has given us and equipped us with, we cannot go out and fight. He would consume us. But with God, we can face any enemy. But we have to be fully equipped in the armor of God. So see what you're missing by not attending Sunday school? The powerful words that God speaks in Sunday school. So I thank God for the word uh, and what he gave Sister Tracy and how he broke down the book of Ephesians for us this year. Next, we're going to go to Sister Penny. She had a powerful book this year. We're going to bring her up and we'll 
let her, let her tell us about her book and why she thinks Sunday school is important. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. I, I just knew I was next. All right. <laughs> I thought it was going to be Okay. Here comes Mr. Petty, right? Amen. Um, I just brought my notes up from Hope Books. I didn't. I, I just said, God use me. That's yeah. right. <laughs> because I, there's a, like you said, there's a lot, and you don't know really. Right. So I said, Well, Lord, just use me. I pulled up my notes from each book, and here we go. Amen. Praise God. My books were the Book of James and the Book of Jude, and you may have already known, but uh, Jude and James were brothers. I spoke that from the beginning. When I first started, because I didn't know that, mm -hmm. and it was it was like, oh my God, how could I not know all these years that you know I'm just saying for me that they were brothers, mm -hmm. you know, and that they were the brother to Jesus. Amazing. Amen? Amen. And it's amazing because yes, it's like you know I think when Elder Harris gives me these books that. God gives them to him, and there's a reason for giving them to me and for all of us, because there's in those books there's something he wants to teach us. Yeah, it's some, it's some, it, for me, I, I can just, and I believe this for you too, there's something he's trying to get over That's to right. us. There's, there's something he's trying to lift us up and bring yes. us up. It's something that he's saying, you need to learn this and turn it around right. so I'm going to give it to you, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, that that's that's my belief and from the time he gives me the book I'll go home and I'll start researching those books. I get on YouTube and start listening yeah. to people minister on that's those it. books, that's right? So it gives me insight on what the, this is even before I open up the book and read it. I go on YouTube and I listen to uh, there's two ministers that I like to listen to and they really go in depth. And so I listen to them and then I go to the book and I read the book. Yes. Amen. So Amen. I just right. thank God, you know, because um, even before I came to greater life, after I gave my life back to Christ, because I had backslid, the Lord told me what he wanted me to do. Yep. And, you know, you say, did, did I hear that? Did I hear that? <laughs> he told me he wanted me to preach and teach. All right. And I'm like, I, I was enough for that. How are you going to preach and teach it? And I don't even know the book, right? So, so from that, here I am. Here I am. Amen. Amen. And it's all because of what, and me being obedient, and it's all because of what God wanted me to do. Amen. He wanted me to preach and teach. And um, it's amazing how God will will bless you and show you how to do what he wants you to do. If he tells you to do the thing, he's going to make a way and he's going to show the, the path that he wants you to go. Amen. So I thank God for this. So I had the book of, of like I said, uh, James and Jude. And they were brothers, and they were the brothers to Jesus. And um, Mary was their mother, but they had different fathers, which we all know. But in the book, uh, the book of James came before the book of um, Paul's books, because he uh, he was the, there at the day of Pentecost, mm -hmm. Amen. And so he was over one of the first churches in Jerusalem, also. Uh, the main script. I'm, I, I, when I taught, I taught Jude first, and I then I taught James. But I realized after that I should have taught James first because uh, Jude comes along a little bit later, even in his ministry. Um, the, the main scripture in the book of James is faith, but uh, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. So we know faith without works is dead. Yeah. Amen. And the overall theme of the book was practical Christian living. Amen. Practical. This book tells you, read it. It goes back and tells you how you should live. Mm -hmm. um, and God and, and James wrote up a guy because at that time, since he was over one of the first churches, they didn't know a lot. So he wrote the book to, to um, encourage their hearts and to show them this is what you should do this is how you should pray this is this is faith without works this talks about the tongue and we know about the tongue just waggles and it all in that so um it, it was written um the, like i said it was the 
James was the, uh, the author. And it says, uh, as far as James go, he was, he wasn't, you talk about a prayer warrior, they called him wobbly knees because he was always on his knees and, it, and he had knees that looked like a camel because he was, wow. his, 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 his life wow. was so um, surrounded by prayer, amen, that it just messed up his knees, amen. Right. So, so uh, that was about, let me see, let me stop. Let's talk about, uh, I'm, I'm going to wrap this up quickly because he said five, seven minutes. But like you said, you can go on and on and on. Sister Holly, right, Sister Eileen? <laughs> but anyway, faith without works is dead. And we know as we live this life, we cannot just say we have faith without works. Right? right. You got to put some That's works it. behind your faith. Oh, yeah. You got to say, okay, God, I, I want this house. And I want this car, and I want, 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 but I ain't, I'm going to sit here and wait, wait for you. As we all learn, as we live this life, it does not go like that. God said, you first, and then I'll follow behind you. That's what it seems like to me. You first, and then I'll, you take the one step, I'll take two, three, four. But you have to put some faith behind your, behind your, 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 your uh, some works behind your faith. Amen. And then we talk, I talked about the tongue. Now, these are the things that God gave me. There's a lot more in there. Oh, yeah. But I pertaining to me to teach you, God wanted to show me me first, and then I could give it oh, all to no. you, right? Oh, and it might pertain to you. And it talked about the tongue. I talked about the tongue and how what comes out of the what comes out of your mouth starts with the heart. Do you guys remember I talked yeah, about yeah. the heart? Yeah. Because yeah. God was dealing with me Amen. on that. So he showed me me. And how I had to turn things around, you know, and he, and he showed me how your heart is prepared, you know, from the child up, up until adult, how people uh, feed into your heart. Amen. And how you've been hurt or how you've yeah. been discouraged or how you um, someone said something to you and all that goes into the heart, mm -hmm. you know, and, yeah. and it builds the heart. And then it, in turn, you start to live what, what was in the heart. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, I can tell you it's not always good. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and he really, I'm going to end on that note. But I wanted to say something about pastor. I understood when God showed me the heart how that pastor loved. Amen. She was gentle. She would never say out of anything out of character. Right. But you had to look at the background. Who raised her? Mm -hmm. Who taught her? Who fed into her? Mm -hmm. And I see why her heart was the way it was. Yes. Amen. And me on the other hand it was just the it was just the opposite. Mm -hmm. The household I was born. I had um there's 12 of us. Mm -hmm. Right? Did I say 12? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, There's 12 of us. Actually, I was thinking 12, 14, but anyway, I had seven brothers, seven sisters. Wow. And so, and, and, um, no, there's, I'm included in the seven girls. Seven girls, seven boys. Seven girls, seven boys. But, you know, I, I got to wind this up. But, you know, how I was brought up, really, it came out of my mouth. You know, if you you know, if you said something to me, I wasn't gonna let you get away with it. Right. Because I learned how to fight yeah. and the tongue. Mm -hmm. And then as I as I got older and the Lord showed me, just because says something the body says something nasty to you doesn't mean you have to in turn. I, you know, I'll fight for you. I'll fight your battle. So, you know, as as I got older, I learned how hurtful I look back on my life and I seen how hurtful I was to people. You know, and what I could have, you know, because of the life, what was put in me, you know. And so as God uh, showed me, me, you know, my life did, has turned around and it still needs more turning around. But just if you, if you love, love is the key to all of it. Love is the key to everything that you do. Is, is that if we have the love of God and if you get in your Bible and study your Bible, if you you can do better in love than you can in hate. Yes. You see what I'm Amen. saying? You can Amen. love things, you can love things out of the way. Yes. Or you don't get if you can uh, if you love some you can love somebody to death. You don't have to fight all your battles. Just you know, I learned to 
to love. I find, you know, I look at people kind of strangely because I said, you know, and, and this is, I'm just talking about my family. If you're in church, you can see the results of love. Mm -hmm. Either you either you're you're taking it in mm -hmm. and living it, or you just taking it in and you ain't living nothing. Mm -hmm. You're not you're not living what you what you uh, what you read. Yeah. There's there's that's no good. Good. there's nothing behind that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the that was the book of James, but there's so much more in that. So I you know go back and read. It's it's not a long book. But go back and read. But that I'm just giving you what God gave to me as far as those two topics. It was on. Um, so that was James, um, and it doesn't give you the order of who was older. We just know Jesus was the oldest, but it doesn't give you any any order of the brothers. He had four brothers, and he said they said um, two sisters, but it could have been more. Amen. So that was the book of James, and I think I got it. Oh, there's so much money, but faith. Okay, so in the book of Jude, and the purpose of the book is to remind the church of the need for constant vigilance to keep strong in the faith and to oppose her heresy. And um, this book was basically on um, false prophets. False prophets. Amen. And we know the author was Jude. Jude was shortened from Judas because his name was Judas. Mm -hmm. But they didn't want to, the, the, the mix up. Mm -hmm. There was Judas that betrayed mm -hmm. Jesus. This is not that Judas. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, the original audience was Jewish, Jewish Christ, Christians. Uh, the key verse was, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you, of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And the key people were James, Jew, James, and Jesus. And he gave me two topics. I'll just speak on the one. Um, the he, when he first was getting ready to write, he was writing on the common salvation. That was his intent. To write about what we have in common as far as salvation and what salvation means to you, what's it's, we, you know, just let's come together and talk about the common salvation, what Jesus did for us and everything. But as he turned to write around and realized, no, we're not going to talk about this. We're going to talk about the false prophets. It's more, it's more uh, needful for you to tell me about uh, about the the uh, false prophets sitting up in the church. Amen. And it's something that we know. And I know greater light because I've been here long enough to know that we know false, false prophets when we see it. Amen. And so um, we don't listen to false prophets. But what he had me speak on was contending for the faith. Anybody remember what I said about contending for the faith? I'm, I'm going to close this out real quick because when he start, when when I read this, he says, in order for you to contend for the faith, you have to know what the faith is. Mm -hmm. You have to know how to, what salvation means. Mm -hmm. You have to know all in detail. So when somebody comes to you with foolishness, you can stand up and say, uh-uh, this is not the way it goes. Amen. You have to be able to back up what you believe mm -hmm. and stand for what you believe. And that's what he was telling the, his people. Although they were young, they were being taught, but we're older. We have the Holy Ghost and we, we know that we have the book. They didn't have the book. Amen. But we have the book and we have to be able to study that book. Just learn the basics of salvation. Mm -hmm. The basics. Do not let anybody back you up against the wall about Jesus. That's what I got from it because I had a grand. I'm close up. I had a grand. I have a grandson. My oldest grandson. Okay, he's a Muslim. He knows that he hasn't been a Muslim long, but he can tell you about that book, and he'll stand for it. And I, when he used to talk, I used to listen to him, and I said, "What you gonna say? What you gonna say about Jesus?" He's the only true God. What are you? Are you, you going to stand back and not say nothing? Mm. Not defend salvation? Not defend Jesus? Mm. Amen. And one day I said, uh-uh. You got to 
one day I said, uh-uh, you got to stand up and defend your faith. That's right. God is real. Yeah. We don't serve no idol, God. That's what they serving. They don't believe in Jesus. If you don't, I told my grandson, you don't believe in Jesus, you're just wasting your time. That's right. If you don't believe in Jesus and what he did at the cross, you ain't making it into heaven. I'm going to get real with you. I, I don't, and you're just not. So therefore, I was I was able to to talk to him and defend the faith, right. defend on what I believed in, and I thank God for that because I had to get it in my heart and mind. You got to know this for yourself. You got to know it for yourself. You can listen to me and all the teachers talk about God's word, but once you leave out of here, and once somebody wants to back you up against the wall and tell you Jesus was a prophet. Because that's what they'll tell you. That's what the Muslims believe. Jesus was a prophet. No, he was my savior. He was my Lord and Savior. He went to the cross and he did all that he did so I could be saved and live for eternity. So in that, you got to know it for yourself. Amen. You, and I'm, I'm, I'm really serious about that. If you're not studying God's word, get busy. That's right. Really, get busy. That's right. And, and know God for yourself. Yeah. The reason I go to Sunday school and went to Sunday school as a child is that when I was a little girl, I went to a church that was down the street from where I lived. And like I said, I had seven brothers and sisters, and we would all go down to, we were the only black little kids in, in the church. And um, they taught us basics of Christianity, just the basics of Christianity. And that, and, and I, and I learned Jesus loves me. This I know, you know, you know, the song, that song, will, you sing that song and sometimes it will tear you up because it goes to the spirit man. So why I love Sunday school so much is because it teaches you, it goes into your spirit and as you get older, God will bring out things that you may have forgotten. Mm -hmm. He may bring a song that you may have forgotten. He may bring a word of encouragement that you may have forgotten. And that all starts from a little a little child. Mm -hmm. A little child. Just the song that that um, will soothe your heart. Just the, you know, the, the different words, you know. They never they never will go away because they go into your spirit, man. And God will bring them at a, at, out as a time as when you need it as an adult or as you're growing up. So I thank God for Sunday school because it teaches me to um, learn God's word and know God's word a little bit better so I can encourage other people and I can stand in the, in the time of trouble. I can stand um, by just standing on God's word. Yeah. I don't have to back up when somebody comes towards me and says, this is this and this and this. And I know that I know that I know that Jesus is the Savior. Amen. He's the Savior of the world. Amen. 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 You can't get up here for five or six minutes. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> you can everybody apologize. <laughs> We thank God for Sister Petty and, yes. and the word and, and all that she brought out yes. in her book about uh, James and Jude and the fact that they were brothers. And one of the key points that she didn't mention, but she said it in her study, was that even though they were Jesus' brothers, they didn't believe in him. They didn't recognize who he was until after the resurrection mm -hmm. is when they finally realized that he was who he said he was. Yeah. So I thank God for your teachings, all that you were able to share with us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's just a reason in itself to come to Sunday school. You find out these amazing facts that are in the scriptures about the people that are writing them and what their story was about. Mm -hmm. But I thank God for, for that. Elder, I see you're getting ready to leave, so I want to get you up here before you do so you can share with us what you have. Amen. 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 Amen.
let me show you what five minutes looks like. <laughs> Sister Eileen and Sister Tracy, uh, the growth, I've only been in Lambton a, a few years. Greater Light. Greater Light. Yeah. Um, but the growth I've seen in YouTube. Sister Tracy, you stood up here and preached. You stood up here and preached God's word with power and authority. And and just because I know a little bit of insight about Sister Tracy, you know, when she's when she's outside of here, she's not, you know, she she can she can go there, but most of the time she's pretty mellow. But when you stood back up here with that authority that you spoke with, that was powerful. And I see the growth in you. Sister Arlene, I've seen you. You, you, you will sit in the farthest corner. You don't, you don't have to say nothing to her. She's fine by herself. Leave me alone. I'm good here. But when you stood back here and preached God's word, you did it with authority Amen. and powerful. There's growth in that. Amen. You know, uh, we're all being obedient. My book was the book of Daniel. My book was the book of Daniel. And each chapter about the book of Daniel was about obedience. Yeah. Was about the power of you standing and just doing what you were told to do. Oh, yeah. And how God will give you great things by you just being simple, obedient. Amen. Yeah. I got to preach next Sunday. Guess what it's going to be about? Okay. Obedience yeah. is better than sacrifice. All right. Oh, All right. All right. All right. takes the hammer and he hits the nail okay. on the head. Okay. He gets all out of the way. Yeah, that was powerful. <laughs> Obedience yeah, is better yeah. than sacrifice. Yeah. So we will look forward Amen. to that okay. word. Thank yeah. God for the word. Yeah. You know, Daniel is another great book that has yeah. lots Very of powerful. interesting things and powerful things and prophetic things. But you got to read the book or come to Sunday school to yeah. find these things yeah. out. So I thank God for that word. Yeah. Now I'll bring up uh, Sister Felicia. Turn. Yeah. 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 I don't even know I'm bringing up these notes because I don't, I don't even know what I'm, it's not going to be like that. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Uh, but there is one that I am looking for. Oh, it's right there. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Praise the Lord, everybody. Man. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. God. This has been powerful. Amen. Powerful word. Amen. Amen. The books that I had that God gave me this year was first and second Peter. And last, I kept meditating on the word all through the week. And one of the things um, I kept thinking about is this year, every word that God had gave me when I was studying, I actually was going through it or I had just been through it, right? Wow. So I have to say that this, my, this first and second Peter changed my life. Yes. Literally. Yes. Amen. Yes. I like, yes. turn it You read it. You receive it, then you teach it, right? Oh, no. Hallelujah. So it has really changed my life. Amen. And last night I went on the YouTube and I was trying to look at like like give like five minutes of each sermon. And I was I was ministering to myself and I remember sitting there, I would think it was the first one that I taught, uh it was a um Sunday school and Lanicia was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at myself and I said, girl, you don't look like what you're going through right there. Amen. <laughs> but it came through with power and authority. Amen. So I'm going to talk about the, the four topics that God gave me through first and second Peter. The first title of my book, um, of the lesson I had was a heavenly inheritance. And how this ministered to me was stop being so focused on the things that are coming at us mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Because we are just pilgrims here. That's it. We are just visitors here. But God has a great promise for us. He has an inheritance. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
I thought about my mom, hallelujah. And she had land in South Carolina, and she's been knowing all her life that she had it, hallelujah. And she said, when I retire, Lord willing, I'm going to move back there, and I'm going to build my house on my land. There was an inheritance that was passed down through my grandmother, through her mother, through her mother, through my grandfather, amen. There was an inheritance. We have an inheritance, greater light, yeah. that we're saved, and as we focus on that, we know that everything that we're going through, it's okay. Because God has a plan for us. Amen. And we can we can we can remember that. Amen. Yeah, hallelujah. The second title of the lessons is We Are the Hope of the World. We are the hope of the world. There was a two-part to that. We have hope in knowing that God is our 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 sure hope. We know Jesus died on the cross and he rose in three days. We know he sent back the comforter. That's an assurity. We can take that to the bank. We know that happened. We have a sure hope in Jesus. Hallelujah. We have an eternal hope. Hallelujah. We know that, um, that eternity awaits for us. If we live right and we do the will of God and we love God with all our hearts, we have an eternal hope. We have an enduring hope. We're going to be here. We're going to go through trials and tribulations because our Lord and Savior did. But we have hope in that, that we can endure through that. And in that, because we are um, kings and, and, and queens, amen, of the most, and children of the Most High God, people watch our lives. Yeah. And as we go through trials and tribulations, it's a witness to them. And it gives them hope. Because they're like, how did they go through that? Well, if they can go through that, then I can go through that. And who is, how are they doing that? And who is this God that they serve? Amen. So we are the hope to everywhere we go, in our jobs, in the supermarket, in our homes, to our children. We are the hope. They're looking at our lives, looking for us to make it. That's why it's important that we stay focused, we stay in Christ, we be obedient to God, we hear his word, and we do what he calls us. To do because we are the hope of the world. Mm -hmm. How many of these the dying world? We are it. Yeah. We are it. God, 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 where are you? We are, look at you. Look yeah. in the mirror. We are it. Yeah. We are it. Amen. Praise yeah. the Lord. The fourth title God gave me is various trials, various grace. Yeah. Various trials, various grace. This I taught this one. Uh, Two days after I was negative for COVID. So really, the, I was still dealing with the COVID. Amen. God, and I was upset because I didn't make my flight. Didn't get to go home to my aunt's birthday party. I was mad at my husband. You know? <laughs> Y'all remember that one? I was teaching that one because I had went through it. Amen. Trial. Amen. But I always will remember that every trial I go through, God has the grace to match that. Yeah. Everything that you go through, no matter what it is, God has the grace to match that specific right. thing. Amen? Yeah. Various yeah. trials, various grace. Glory, Glory to God. Glory. And my last one that God gave me, it all sums up to love. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he was talking to, the belief, talking to us about love, loving thy neighbor, loving one another, but most of all, loving the brethren, even though we're different, even though different personalities. All right now. Maybe someone may do what they're supposed to be doing, but loving each other through the hard times. I gave an example when my family loved me when I was pregnant with my daughter. I was, none, I was no joke, but I reflect back on that time, and I said, I know they loved me, because how I was acting was not good. So when my babies, sometimes if they act up, or if my husband <laughs> act up, you know, we all can act up. All of us can act up, right? Amen. But I remember that. I remember that. Love. Sometimes you have to love people through. Love them through their mess. Love them through their whatever. Even when those that, that persecute you or challenge you or, or, or offend you. Amen. That God said that we 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 love. Amen. Hallelujah. So 
that is my, the way I'm giving my review is all the four things, the four lessons that God had gave me that I, that he allowed me to minister this year. Amen. Peter was a disciple of God. He was actually, his name was mentioned more times uh, in the Bible, more than any other disciple. Mm -hmm. He was the leader, you know, mm -hmm. and he was, um, he was, he was like, the, he was Peter, the rock. Yeah. You know, and we know about Peter. We know that that Peter wasn't. Uh, he was kind of one of those ones that he asked questions. Yeah. Um, and some, and even when he was uh, in 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 Jesus, when they went to go capture Jesus, he was there. He cut the Roman soldier ear off because he got no, oh, no. You know, he was kind of one of those strikers. So it's amazing that he's writing his book to the Christians. And he's encouraging them because they're being heavily persecuted through this time. And he's encouraging them because he had walked with God and he had saw what God has done. And he had learned a lot of things and he saw the Lord being persecuted and being raised. And now he's changed and he's able to encourage. Amen. So I thank God. So now I'm changed and I'm able to encourage. Wasn't that powerful? Yeah. Yeah. See what you're missing when you don't come to Sunday school? The same thing you said. You guys missed it a lot when you don't come to Sunday That's school. right. That's right. So powerful. These lessons that come out of Sunday school. Y'all, you know, like my wife said, y'all, you know, sometimes, y'all, you know, if you don't come to Sunday school, church has already been had by the time you get here for second service. You know, because we done already got fed. But, you know, each of these lessons that she talked about, Heavenly Inheritance, we are the hope of the world. Yeah. Various trials and various grace. It all sums up to love. They're on our website. They're on the no YouTube. Go back and watch them and see what you're yeah. missing. Yeah. And the next time you can see it in person yeah. for yourself. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So powerful. The word of God going forth in the Sunday School class. Yeah. Now we're going to bring up our very own Deaconess Sheree Stevens. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. 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 I didn't have mine all printed out, uh, but um, and my internet at home is not working. But praise the Lord! Thank God for the for the, uh, the tablet. Praise Amen. the Lord, because <laughs> they're saved for technology and they're saved on there. And I'm gonna try to be just five minutes. <laughs> oh my God! Just five minutes. It's so true. You cannot get up here and give these books. And just five minutes, so I'm just stick with with the theme. Amen. Praise the Lord. And um, I, when I first started, I had the book of um, Nahum and Habakkuk or Habakkuk, and I started reading those books and doing like Sister Petty and the rest of them going on YouTube and listening because when I I start reading them and I'm like, oh, I don't understand nothing they're talking about. <laughs> I don't understand nothing. Hard word to give to God's people. Amen. 
They both had a hard word to give to God's people, and sometimes that's not the easiest thing to do when you're talking to a multitude of people, amen, because they're hard-headed, stiff-necked, don't want to listen, want to do what they want to do, amen, and they go into hell in a, in a what they call a handbag, amen, praise the Lord, so God, you know, sometimes has to give someone who is bold, amen, amen, and has confidence, amen, and what they're saying, amen, when it comes to the word of God. And like Sister Patty, was, you said, you know, you heard your grandson, and he was talking, amen, and you was sitting there, you know, like, I need to speak up. I need to speak up. I need to say something, because there's only one way, and there's only one true and living God, amen, and his name is Jesus. Yeah. So sometimes God will use somebody like that. And I would say, you know, because my sister over here, she'll say, well, you have that bold personality. And I'd be like, no, I don't. No, yeah, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a bold personality, yeah. but only God gave that to me because I didn't always have that bold personality yeah. or walk in confidence. But the confidence came from reading the word because the word says you got to walk in his confidence. That's right. Amen. And that's right. what I do. Amen. Yeah. I walk right. in the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord, and I walk in his confidence. Amen. So there was um, the last word that I taught, you know, a couple Sundays ago. It was God's power in the midst of chaos. Amen. Mm -hmm. So both of these men, prophets, were the, the, the people of Nineveh and the people of Judah, they were doing what they want, wanted to do. They were living in sin. I mean, they had, you know, I guess like you could say backslid. They knew the word. They knew God. Amen. But they decided they wanted to do what they wanted to do. Amen. And God had already sent Amen. Um, uh, uh, um, you know, someone to speak to uh, the people of Nineveh, but then they still decided that I still want to, they wanted to revert back to their old ways. And you can think about, if you think about the world today, okay, God has been taken out of schools. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He has been taken out of the courthouse. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord, because you know, you used to always see in God we trust. Amen. You don't see that anymore. Amen. And they're, they're taking God out of everything. You know, children are killing children. Amen. Look at everything that's going on in the world today. And someone stood up here and said, uh, I want to say evangelist because I wrote down evangelist and I put in parentheses deacon. Ness. I wrote evangelist right here. Yeah, I did. I did too. Praise the Lord. Uh, Harris, she said they just don't care anymore. They don't care. People are not afraid of God anymore. No, 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 Amen. No. They are not afraid of God, and they don't. It seems that they don't care about God. Yes. So it's up to us, Amen. Us that do know God mm -hmm. to tell them that That's Jesus is coming back, Amen. Yes. And 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 He is. You know, you might be getting your second chance or your third chance, but you ain't getting too many more, Amen. Right. If any, Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. True. But my favorite, Amen, out of these two books was the book of Habakkuk. Yeah. And that word that I taught, it was vision and faith. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go to the scripture really quick. Um, and it's Habakkuk 2, 2 through 4. And it says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, and that, they, that he may run that readeth it. Mm -hmm. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Mm -hmm. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted, lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. There's vision and faith. Amen? Because as um, Habakkuk was, you know, he went to God and he was telling God, this, these folks is acting crazy, they ain't doing right. What do you mean? And God, God tells him that I'm going to use what they're doing, you know, to, to work this thing out. Amen? Yeah. Because all things work together for our good. Amen? Right. But Habakkuk, you know, goes to God again and God says, well, you write the vision and, and make it plain. Amen? So God mm. had Habakkuk write the vision. Yeah. Mm. Amen? And, you know, that, that was powerful to me. God had yeah. Habakkuk write the vision. Right. What you see, yeah. write it. That's right. Yes, God. What you see, write it. Right. Amen? Right. Write it. Amen? Write it. So, receiving, receiving of the vision. The vision is uh, dictated by God. Amen? Yeah. God gave Habakkuk the vision, but he had to position himself to receive the vision. Say, people of God, I'm positioning myself to receive the vision. 
I'm positioning myself to receive the vision. We have to separate ourselves at times from the situation to hear from God. Sometimes we have to go in our closet, amen? We have to go to God, amen? Make our petitions known unto him. God, you know, you put this in me, you know, and, and, and my business success is in your hands. You were born and created to succeed. God has given you everything you need. He's put it deep down on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. So what Habakkuk already wrote, God had already seen it. Come on now, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank yes. you, Jesus. He already seen it. Amen. God also gives a vision to leaders. Amen. And I consider, my, consider myself a leader. Amen. Yes. Because yes. if I have a vision and God's given it to me, I got to give it out. Amen. Praise the Lord. So Habakkuk had to give that vision out, amen? Write the vision, make it plain, and they that read of it, amen, will run. It will tarry, it may, but you know, but wait for it, it will surely come. Praise the Lord. And a vision, a vision or a dream cannot become a reality if you do not work it. Sister Patty talked about that. You got to work the word that's in the word, amen? You got to work the word that you heard. Work the word that's in the word, amen? Working on it causes it to manifest. Amen. Yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. And as you, as, as I stood up here and testified earlier that um, I was laid off. Amen. But you heard me also say, some of you heard me say, I'm working myself out of a job. Mm -hmm. I spoke that yeah. thing. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now you realize that it was going to happen. <laughs> I'm working myself out of a job because I'm walking in a word. Amen. I'm walking in a vision that God has given me. I mean, it hasn't totally, it hadn't even manifested, amen, at the time. No. But it is manifesting itself because I wrote it. I see it every day, amen, and now it's starting to manifest itself. Although it seems scary to me, it will surely come, and it is manifesting itself, amen. You would be amazed if my husband said, he's seen it, amen, he's watching it, and I think it even, he even looks like, wow, at times, amen. I really do. I think he's Wow, sometimes, because you he's seeing he's seeing this thing come to pass that God has put in my mind, amen, and in my heart, amen, yeah. praise the Lord, yeah. because here we go. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, no faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of what you don't see. The evidence right. is manifesting itself, amen, yeah. praise the Lord. Yeah. No faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of what you do not see. Mm. Now faith. Amen. There is a partnership in this thing. You and God. Amen. You must be persistent, meaning we have to walk in faith. We we don't what well, we don't see, but we believe it. We don't know how it's going to happen, but we continue to move in faith. And I wrote something down, praise the Lord, as Deaconess Harris was speaking, and as one of, I think Sister Tracy or one of you were speaking, and I wrote. Who do you see? What do you see? How do you see it? Trust God because he already sees it. Mm. Oh, amen. Word. Praise amen. the Lord. And then the last thing, amen, and I went a couple minutes over. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Stop going around the vision and stick with the vision and to the vision God has given you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Sometimes, even though you can go back on the YouTube or you can go on the website, it's nothing like hearing it firsthand and in person for yourself. Because, see, there's a lot of power that is flowing through the Sunday school department is what we're trying to hear, I mean, get you to see today and be able to participate and get a part of it. But, you know, she talked about, you know, Minor prophets delivering a hard word. It's not easy to get up here and speak the word of God because there's some hard things that are in the word of God. God doesn't sugarcoat his word. It's not always about making you feel good. Sometimes it makes you feel pretty low or makes you feel like, you know, that you've done a whole lot wrong. And we have. But it's also a message of reconciliation, that God has a plan of salvation 
to bring everybody into the fold. So I thank God for the word, Deacon Asheri, and all that he gave you throughout that word, because it was powerful. You know, even though those were some hard books, but God brought you through it yeah. and gave you an understanding of what it was talking about. But now we're going to bring up Deacon Rodney. I know we're getting late in the hour, but we want to get through these. Come on up, Deacon. Yeah, share with us today. <laughs> oh, praise God. <laughs> Lord. Say, so what do you do with that? Huh? Mm -hmm. oh, come on now. My God. That, that, that's it. My God. Mm. Woo! Boy. <laughs> you say, man, how, how do I come with this? You come with it the way God told me. You come with it the way I gave it to you. That's right. So, I first and foremost, I want to give honor to what well, honor this dude. And, Pastor, I thank God for you praying for us. Yeah. In the morning service, oh, like yeah. you do, yeah. and it yeah. is it is so, man, powerful. Amen. I mean, it's the the way you go at it, when you go at it, and that's the, the vision. And so I thank God for that, you know, because that just gets us charged and get us ready. Who's about to bring the word? Amen. 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 Thank God. So let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you once again for the opportunity to be before you and your people, Father God. Thank you for all that you have given me, Father God. I bless you and I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I was given the book of, and it's the last two books in the Old Testament, Zechariah and Malachi. Oh boy, boy, boy. You know, as it, we were talking and um, I heard some of the teachers say, man, I got this book. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on with this? But see, God knows what's going on with this. Yeah. Yes, he does. So, so when you start to dig in, you start to find out, like, oh, 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 oh yeah. yeah, this fits me right. Okay, 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 Lord, I know, I know why now. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So, much like we, uh, Zachariah was given uh, a word. To encourage the people about unfinished business, mm -hmm. building the temple, you know, and that related to us. Mm -hmm. There is some unfinished business that Greater Light has to finish. We started it, but yet we didn't finish it. Amen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so that fit me perfect because I'll start something and then I'll get away from it. But then God has to remind me that it's not done. Okay. That's right. And it ain't done until He says it's done. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I said, Wow, Lord, thank you. Thank you for giving that to me. And then he all um, in the book of Malachi. The people got away and they were doing all kinds of strange and crazy things and, yeah. and believing like much today. Yeah. You tell them something and they don't yet believe that it's possible. Because they're looking at you like all this is occurring and you choose to serve a God where what purpose is God? And see the purpose for God being God is that you don't know that your next minute or your second, mm -hmm. but yet you continue to go about your business like you do. Yes. And we that know, know that God is in control. He gave me a message and it's, 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 it stands like this. I taught on first love. God is everything that we need. He's our first love, he's our last love. And so when you get to the point where you said the beginning and then the ending, it means he started it and he'll finish it. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So I give God thanks for being my beginning and then being my end. 
because everything will start with him and everything will finish with him. And so I thank God for allowing me to be in front of the people, the congregation, and be able to go forth with power. And I heard Elder say it's like 31 flavors. You got a variety. Why would you miss it when you got it like that? Okay. Come on now. <laughs> Come and get the flavor. Oh my goodness. And everything that comes from God is what? Good. 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 Yeah. So when you get that, that fresh word in the morning, Sunday school, that's exactly what it is. It's good. It's your right now. And sometimes it may be the only thing that you get, but the only thing you need. So when I was going, my mom would send us to Sunday school, to a church down the street. And what Sunday school meant to me was like, you're getting to find out about the God who gave life, the God that loves you. He loves you so much that he died for you. And I can relate to him. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Yeah, it is very and right. so, man, I'm excited and I'm excited about the year to come and the new book that God will give me. And I thank you guys. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Deacon. You know, he talked out of the book of Zechariah and Malachi, which are also two hard books. God was telling Zechariah that they needed to finish up something they had started. I think we've all been there once every now and then, have started something, then got away from it and didn't finish it. And somebody has to remind us, God has to remind us, get the job done. we got to finish it. And then he talked about the book of Malachi. You know, we read that every Sunday. We don't read it in depth, but 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 we know what it's talking about. One, he's talking about God is God. There's nobody else. God is God. God is who he says he is. He is our first love and our ending love. He is the very beginning and the end of everything. And if you think about it, he's everything in between. Come on now. God is so good. So again, just more reinforcements of what you are missing when you don't come to Sunday school. Because there's just so much that is there. Now we're going to hear from our two that are on the Zoom, uh, Elder Stubblefield and Sister Valerie. I'll let Sister Valerie go first, and then I'll let Elder Stubblefield tell us Amen. what he Praise thinks. God. Sister Valerie, are you there? Amen. Bear with me just a second. All right, Sister Valerie. There you go. All right. Awesome. Awesome. I am back before you again. <laughs> so um, I went over a lot of it this morning of my book of Psalms and kind of, you know, did a little, little bit of a summary, but I will add to it. Um, I'm sure mine is going to be short, but we'll see how it goes. Amen. Amen. So, so Psalms, Psalms are, a song, are songs of praises too our God, as our creator, as our sustainer, as our redeemer. And, and studying Psalms for me, it gives you a better understanding of God. It guides you in your relationship with him. Psalm is a source of comfort and in times of pain and distress. Psalm reminds you often of God's control over, over everything, which is a truly blessing. I thank God for that because he does have all control, right? Mm -hmm. Psalm reminds you of to praise and worship no matter what, which I spoke up this morning. Uh, I think that was in 84, I believe, how they was traveling through uh, to go to Jerusalem and it was a hardship travel. The journey was hard, but yet they sung and gave a praise to the Lord, even though they was going through a rough time, a hard time, and that's how we are. We, we 
even though we're going to a rough time or we're going to, you know, sadness and everything, we're going to praise the Lord. Amen. Psalm reminds us, Psalm remind, shows us, sorry, Psalm shows us how God is always there for us, even when we think he doesn't, uh, doesn't hear us. As I, I, I think, I believe I spoke about this earlier too in my, in my lesson, that how David felt like, you know, he was unjustly being accused of something he didn't do. And he was crying out to the Lord. And he just felt like, is he listening? Does he hear me? You know, but the Lord always hears us. And he's always on time. Amen. Mm -hmm. Always, never late. We were thinking at our time, okay, you no, know, we need it right now. But no, Lord said, no, I know what's best for you. My yeah, time, Lord. right? He always knows. Amen. He reminds us how much he loves us. He, he will, and he will never leave us. He also reminds us that he is a forgiving God, mm. right? And we spoke about that this morning, about how he's forgiving God in Psalms 32, I believe it was, and um, how it is a true blessing how the Lord really, he forgives us. And we are blessed to be forgiven by the Lord. We are blessed that he covers our, 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 our sins. Amen. And that's truly a blessing. And God is good. So that's what a little bit about my psalm, about my, a little point about the book I have. It was truly a blessing. Reading psalms, it was just, I know in the beginning when I first got my book, I'm going to be transparent here. <laughs> so when I first was like, okay, Sister Valerie, I remember the Sunday. It was the first Sunday, I think, I came back after, you know, COVID had broke out or whatever. And I came in and... Uh, uh, and our sister, um, my sister, my elder, he was an elder then. And he's like, okay, Sister Bella, I have your book. I'm like, huh? <laughs> Wait a minute. You know, you guys know me. I mean, know the old me, put it that way. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. And I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm just like, I couldn't say no. Because <laughs> inside, I will say he's freaking no. <laughs> Honestly. <Okay. laughs> but I thank God for calling me forth because <sighs> give me a minute. Glory to God. God knows. God is so good. It was, he, I thank him for calling me forth because he knows exactly what I needed. But my yeah. prayer was, you know, I want to know the word, Lord. I want to be close to you, Lord. He said, okay, I'm going to put you in Sunday school. I'm going to draw you close. I'm going to reveal my word to you. Mm. And I think I praise God. I praise God for the boldness he's putting in me. And that would lead me to why, when, this leads me to why Sunday school means so much to me now, because it gives me the confidence and it gives me the oh, boldness God. to come forth and speak yeah. his word and yeah. not be, you know, scared and not, you know, thinking, oh, I can't speak. No, the Lord said, you can speak and you will speak and you have. And yeah. I thank you for the confidence that he was giving yeah. it to me. You know, and, and, and reading the word, you can't just, just read it and, okay, I read the word. No, it makes you, being a Sunday school teacher, it makes you go down, dig deep, and get it, and really get an understanding of the Lord. That's what teaching Sunday just does for you. It gives you the understanding so you're able to go out and share the word because yeah. getting an understanding, keeping it to yourself, is, keeping it to yourself is not what, what God wants us to do, right? He wants to get it, understand. He wants to teach us, teach it to your people and spread the word and share his word because we're supposed to go out to the highways and to the byways and spread his words. You know, like, like it says, I don't know if it's, uh, like it says, well, you, you don't light a candle and put it underneath a bushel, right? You know, you light a candle and you put it on top of something and it lights up the room. And that's what the word, studying his word, being a teacher, you know, we, we, we have that light. We have that wisdom. So we're going to spread it out through the word, not keep it to ourselves. We're going to bless the other people, you know, share the word to the law so that they may know, you know. And that's what it means to teach Sunday school to me, to be able to share it and not hold it in and not keep it to yourself. It just... It's just such a blessing and apply it to your life, you know, amen. Because when you teach Sunday school, it hits you first, right? It's, it's like the word is meant for you. Oh. So you and you and it, it's all like, okay, Val, this is what you need. So now you go out and teach it as well. So it hits you first. I thank God for that. I thank God for where He's taking me and how He has deepened my relation with Him. And I just thank Him, I just glorify Him, and I give Him all the praise. Amen. Yeah. That's what I have. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Start off from here. That was powerful, Sister yes. Mallory. Yes. You know, that's what Sunday school will do for you, especially Amen. as a teacher, because it will bring out of you, even though, you know, I was one of those kind of people when I first started and I got called out, you know, I didn't, you know, do a lot of studying, but it'll cause you to study in depth books that you have mm -hmm. never given Amen. maybe a first thought about reading. You know, we all read the popular books of the Bible, yes. but many times we don't go to those little books or, right. or, 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 you know, some of the books that seem to be difficult mm -hmm. to understand, but mm -hmm. see God wants to reveal the whole Bible yeah. in yeah. its entirety to each yeah. of us. So I thank God for using you, Sister Valerie, and we look forward to what he's going to do for next year. All right? Amen. 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 Elder Stubblefield, are you there, sir? Yes, sir. I am here. All right. Go right Amen. ahead, sir. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Just giving honor to God. Amen. Uh, my wife, pastor, all, all of you guys there. You know, it's been a wonderful service today, and I thank the Lord. Um, my book was the book of John. I just had one book, but uh, this book was uh, was was incredible. And, uh, and you guys know the one of the most famous verses uh, in the world. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That's John 1 and 1. Come on, somebody. Uh, and so that, that was so powerful. So that means that Every single time that I get into the word, I'm getting God. I mean, you, you got to understand that revelation because that's what he said. And then he said, and this is this is what got me um, because I had one of the most challenging years of my adult life in 2022. It has been absolutely um, mind boggling how I've been able to get through this year. But I got to tell you, John 1 and 12 says, but as many as received him to them gave he the power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. So I just kept believing on his name. So that means that I become a, a son of God. Hallelujah. And then it says, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God, which told me, that revelation told me, and it's for you as well, that you are here because God wanted you here. You were born because God wanted you to be born. It don't matter what the circumstances was that got you here. Y'all heard the story. I told y'all many times, my mama was 15 when she had me. 15, okay? Now you go, somebody go ahead and write that story, how a 15 year old girl is gonna birth a, a man that would be who I am today. Come on somebody, you, you just can't think that kind of stuff up, but God knew. So I am here by God's design. So this book for the whole year was kind of, it was, it was my comfort, it was my guidance, it was my strength, because as I gone through the chapters over the whole course of this year, I said, yeah, I am who God says I am. I'm here because God made me to be here. And then I got to John 5, and we talked about the uh, moving towards your blessing, that brother that was there at the pool of Bethesda. And the first thing Jesus said when he got there, he said, man, you've been here 38 years. Would you be made whole? He spoke to the man's mindset. And that made me think for a minute. I said, wait a minute. So I, the man couldn't move. He couldn't get nowhere on his own. But Jesus said, wait a minute, brother, you got to see it first in your mind. Do you want to get up? Yeah. Uh -huh. And so that was that question that God gave him. I said, whoa. And the man, obviously, you know, God said, rise, take up thy bed and walk. So he was able to get up. He didn't need no man to put him in the pool after that. Praise the Lord. God got him up. And so I had to think about anything that's trying to stifle me, trying to hold me up. I got to think about in my mind, I got to get up. I got to keep going. You want to know how I can do all this stuff? I don't know. I just know that God said your mind has got to be in the right place. Will you be made whole, Devin? Praise the Lord. Will you get up, Devin? Will you still work, Devin? Will you still care, Devin? Will you do those things? Praise the Lord. And so that was that was really driving me. And then John 6 came about provision. You remember all those guys were following Jesus all day long. They was hungry and they wasn't expecting no food. But Jesus said, wait a minute, what do we got here? The little boy with the five loaves. Oh. And, and the fish, praise the Lord, fed 5,000 men plus the women and children. And wow. then Jesus wrapped it up 
He said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. In other words, his provision is profound. His provision is always proof that he is there for us. Praise the Lord. So that encouraged me even further. And then in John 9, we have the man. The Bible tells us he was blind from his birth, from his birth. And the Arab, I was trying to figure out, well, who sinned? He did, or his mama sin, his daddy sin? What happened? Why is this guy blind? Why is God punishing him? And Jesus said, no, y'all got it all twisted. He is there so that the glory of God may rest upon him. Praise the Lord. And so Jesus spat on the ground. He put the spit in the clay, took the clay, put it on the man's eyes. You ever put clay on your eyes before? Probably not. Praise the Lord. You cannot see through clay. Praise the Lord. But Jesus wanted to show everybody of his miraculous power. He put the clay on the man's eyes. And then he said, wipe it off. Go wash yourself. And he did. And the man said he could see. Praise the Lord. That was powerful. That was a miracle interruption. And so that showed me, amen, at some point, God is going to show up and give us a miracle interruption. And it may not come the way we expect it to come. He got, got he might spit in the ground again and put some more clay in our eyes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. But we're going to see something, hallelujah, when God is ready to bring forth that miracle. And then in John 14, he said, wait a minute, the disciples were kind of worried about things because they knew that things were kind of getting a little tense around the city and had knew something was going to happen. Yeah. Jesus said, hold up, gentlemen. He says, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world give it. Right. Let your heart not be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus was getting ready to get crucified. And he told these brothers, he said, wait a minute. You don't got to be scared of nothing. And so that helped me out because death was all around me this year in 2022. It was around me everywhere. Praise yeah. the Lord. And I just have to just say, peace. Peace, peace in my speech, in my spirit, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so Jesus said, no more fear. And then in John 15, Jesus came right back. He had to give more encouragement and he encouraged me. He says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth. Hallelujah. You should, your fruit should remain. You should bring forth fruit. Your fruit should remain that whatsoever you ask of my father in my name, he may give it you. Yeah. Amen. And that was in the midst of all the trouble, in the midst of all the craziness. Praise the Lord. He said, no, no, no. I chose you. I got you. I got you in this. And then finally in John 21, the final chapter of the book, it reminded me of my trial sermon, my very first sermon I, I ministered January 16th, 1994 at, at the New Hope Baptist Church in Seattle. Reverend um, Robert Jeffrey was the pastor. That was the day that I preached my first sermon. And I preached this sermon about, you know, how Peter was, was, was met Jesus after the resurrection. And he came to his said, he said, do you love me, Peter? And this was after Peter had denied him three times, the cock crew three times. Peter was destitute. He was desolate. He was messed up in his head. And so Jesus had to restore him. He had to bring him back into the fold. He said, Peter, son of Jonas, Simon, do you love me? And Peter said, yeah, Lord, you know I love you. He said, then feed my sheep. And the Lord asked him the same question three times in a row. Why? Because God wanted him to be restored from the three times that he denied him when he was on his way to be crucified. He restored Peter. And sometimes, you know, we go through situations and sometimes we may we may not have an, some faith in certain areas. Sometimes we might fall short. Sometimes we might not get it right. But God comes back and he said, do you love me anyway? Do you love me in spite of your own shortcomings? Do you love me? And in that particular request, in that question, God restores his people. And you all know the rest of the story. Praise the Lord. You know, Peter went on and you guys know some people got saved by his shadow. He was that anointed from God. So I just wanted to share that was my book. Um, I just walked you through seven different messages that I gave throughout the year on John. These are seven themes that will bless your life and bless my life. And so now it brings me to the final piece. What does it mean to be in Sunday school? Well, it's like this. 
we have to think about when we're in church and listening to a sermon, we're in receiving mode. But when we are in Sunday school, we are in receiving and learning and implementation mode because it's designed for that. I heard other, others say this morning that you can interact, you can ask questions, you can raise your hand, you can stop the, the instructor and say, hey, what, if, what do you mean about this? So here it is. For me, it was like all of you who teach Sunday school, all of you who get anointed by the, the, the power and the, and the spirit of God, I can see God manifest himself through each of you individually. And that's mm -hmm. what I need because God is not a copycat. God, God is an original and he is an original through all every single teacher. So we don't have the same style. We don't have the same delivery. We don't have the same methods. Oh, but we what we do have in common is the power and the anointing of God that manifests itself through us. So that's why I come to Sunday school, because I want to see how God is teaching us today, because he can use a sister Valerie's voice. He can use a deacon of Cherie's personality. He can use a sister Harris's um, exuberance. He can use Pastor Harris's breakdown of the word. He can use Brother Rodney's way of prayer. He can use all of these things, Sister Petty's analysis of the word, Sister Tracy's breakdown. He can use all of those things Ooh, go ahead. to bring us into the perfect understanding of his word. That's why I come to Sunday school, and that's why you ought to come to Sunday school. Right. Yeah. Yeah. because there is so much in that particular book. You know, I was told early on as a, as a new believer, if you want to know how to start Amen. reading the Bible, Amen. start with the book of John. It will help you in your understanding. It will help you to have a better idea of who Jesus is. As Elder said, he is the word. That is God, the word that was made flesh and dwelt among us. He talked about moving into your blessing. He talked about becoming sons of the living God, the bread of life, the miracle interruption. God will interrupt your life and bring a miracle. And that God has chosen you. You have not chosen him because you could only be drawn to him if he calls you. You know, and then he said, the last one, his 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 trial sermon, do you love me? That's what the Sunday school teachers are doing. If you love Christ, you will feed his sheep. Well, I thank God for every Sunday school teacher, every book that has been presented. It, it, it builds a foundational case of why to come to Sunday school. I know it's early on a Sunday morning. Some like to sleep in and, and maybe join in for the later service. But, you know, they say that the best meal of the day is breakfast. And you can only have breakfast if you get up in the morning. And if you come to Sunday school, you can get that meal that will last you all throughout the week. You know, I had the privilege of teaching out of the book of Matthew, and I'm not going to be very long because I know the hour is far spent. But you take the book of Matthew, and the book of Matthew is about connecting the dots. You know, some people are very intellectual, and unless it's written down in black and white to where they can kind of see the outline of the whole story, it's not going to make any sense to them. Uh -huh. Matthew was given to teach to the children of Israel, the Jews of the nation of Israel. And he connected the dots all the way from creation wow. through all the Old Testament, the prophets, 
all the way to the New Testament. It is said about the book of Matthew, that is the door that opens between the old and the new and brings them all together as one story. Because see, you have to understand that way back in the Garden of Eden, the promise was given, the seed of the woman. And that manifested into the body of Jesus Christ. Christ, yeah. the one who came to pay the penalty of sin, yeah. that he would reconcile yeah. man back together again with Father God. Yeah. He is the one that is able to do that. Jesus said that he has come to fulfill the law, but not to take away the law. Yeah. And you would ask, well, what does that mean? Is everything in the Old Testament doesn't just go away. Yeah. But Jesus came to bring life uh -huh. and grace and mercy that the law would not allow for. If you break the law, you're guilty of what the law says. There's no redemption in the law. Yeah. Redemption is in the blood of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. For he shed his blood yeah. that all who would come to him might be saved. But see, it tells the story from his birth to his death to his resurrection. And it foretells his coming back again. Two things that I'll leave with you, and I'm done. But Matthew 1 and 23 says, Behold, and we should know this because we're coming into the season of Christmas, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then if you'll fast forward to Matthew 28 and 19 and 20. Go ye therefore, the great commission, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. This is what I want to leave you with, is this. Emmanuel says, being interpreted, God with us. This last scripture says, I am with you always. No matter what you're going through in life, God is with you. Amen. He came into this world to be with mankind. When he left, he sent us the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, but he is with us always. Amen. That's why you need to come to Sunday school to learn yeah. of him. Because yeah. how can you get to know somebody if you never spend time conversating with them? You know, I could never know my wife if I never spent time talking to her and, 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 and listening to her and getting to know her. Well, see, if you want to know who God is and if you want to know who Jesus is, yeah. It's in the Bible. Yes. That's the more reason to come to Sunday school Amen. is to get to know the God of creation. Get to know your Savior. Yes. He wants to communicate with you. He wants to have fellowship with you. He wants to be just like it was in the Garden of Eden Amen. when he would come down and have conversation with Adam. He wants to have a one-on-one -on -one with you. He wants to ask you about your day, mm -hmm. how are you doing, what's going right, All what's right. not going right, hey what can I help you with, what can I do for you. Yeah. He wants to have that kind of relationship with you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what you learn yeah. in Sunday school. Yeah. So let's give God a hand yeah. for all the teachers. Bible says, taste and see 
that the Lord is good. God is so good to all of greater life. Before we dismiss, I'm going to give our pastor another opportunity if he's there, if he would like to say anything to us. Pastor, are you there? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, sir. Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, great light. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Man, what a powerful service today, first and second. But the review and the, and the glory that came through the word and expression of all the books that were presented this year, I just thank God for it. It's amazing to hear the growth and the glory of God working through the, the ministers and teachers in, in greater light. And if you, if, you, if you do get a chance, go back and really listen to the tone and the expression of everybody individually, but how the power works through, as uh, Elder Stubblefield pointed out, individual and, and to the specific personality that it comes out as such a blessing. And I thank God for it today. And I, I look with great anticipation to what will, will become in the new year and the growth that will continue to show and the glory of God. I thank you for it today in Jesus' name. God bless everybody. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. It was a powerful service today and, and such a powerful service that you can't really dismiss on something like that. But okay. if you'll all stand with me, just a reminder of our upcoming services. We will have Bible study this coming week, Wednesday night. If you'll avail yourselves to the service next Sunday morning, 8.30 a.m. prayer, Sunday school at 9 o'clock, and then worship service at 10.30. Yeah. Avail yourselves to the services and go back, as Pastor said, listen to this service. We recorded it. Yes. Yeah. That way you can kind of hear every teacher's commentary and their thoughts on the word and and all that would inspire you to come and, and, and receive of the Sunday school program. Amen. But we'll just say a word of prayer as we close out. Father God, we just want to come to you thanking you first and foremost for who you are. Thanking you for blessing and bringing us all together today under your precious covering. Thanking you for every teacher that you have blessed greater light with to rightly divide the word of truth, yes, God. to be able to minister and feed your saints, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you will continue to bless them and cover them and give them depths of understanding of your word, wisdom from your word, knowledge, and being able to rightly divide it and teach it to the people, I pray. Now I ask, take us from this part of the service, never from your presence, keeping us throughout the week to come, bringing us all back at the appointed hour, we pray, and we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for everything that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you, Greater Light. Everybody have a good week. Oh, Okay, I'll take that.